Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to this vlog, which is going to be a reading vlog, reading more Reese Witherspoon book club picks. I'm really excited for this video. If you haven't seen my playlist that has to do with celebrity book clubs, I love them. I especially love Reese's book club. Something about the genres she picks and the stories she picks usually work for me. So I've had a lot of luck reading her book club picks. And today I'm just reading some more that I've been interested in. I will have my playlist of vlogs linked below in case you wanna go see what other Reese books I've read in the past. I've done two other videos specifically dedicated to the Reese Witherspoon book club, but I've also read lots of her other picks just on my own and in other times. And then I also did one other vlog with a variety of celebrity book clubs. So I have a lot of fun with these and I'm excited to get into this video. Before I get into the books that I'll be reading, I did also just want to mention my background, my situation. I am currently at my husband's parents' house. We're staying with the in-laws. We'll actually be here for the next about three weeks. We are in the middle of moving from Iowa to North Dakota. And while we wait for our house to be ready to close on, we will be staying here. So a little bit of a weird situation, but it's all gonna work out. So I guess let's go ahead and talk about the books that I'll be reading for this vlog. I did pick three of them. The first one I have is LA Weather by Maria Amparo Escandon. I believe this is a contemporary book. This was Reese's book club pick back in August of 2021. I've had my eye on it ever since. Something about the cover is really interesting to me. It screams Reese's book club cover. I haven't really heard many reviews of it or anything. So I'm going in open-minded. I believe this is a contemporary book following a Mexican American family that lives in LA. I believe they've got some family turmoil going on plus they are battling it sounds like a really hot and wild fiery summer or period of time which is coming at a timely time the day that i'm filming this we are in the thick of the canadian wildfires and that smoke that's coming down into the u.s i am not in an area that's been heavily affected so i am very lucky for that but very much so have my thoughts going out to the people in canada and on the eastern side of the u.s struggling with uh, some pretty terrible air quality but that being said hoping that this is an emotional, hard-hitting, and still interesting book for me to read. The next book that I'll be reading is Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. I believe this is also a contemporary book, maybe with a little bit of a mystery element, but it has to do with two Asian American women who band together to grow a counterfeit handbag scheme. I assume there are going to be shenanigans, hijinks, so I'm in for hopefully an entertaining ride with this one. And this was the book club pick in May of 2022. Again, haven't really heard any reviews or anything on this book. So hoping it's a pleasant surprise. And then lastly, I will be reading Did You Hear About Kitty Carr by Crystal Smith Paul. This is, I believe also a contemporary book with a little bit of a mystery element about a white actress who dies, but bequeaths her multi-million dollar estate to three young wealthy black women, which prompts questions from a lot of people. This was the book club pick just last month in May of 2023. I have seen a lot of critical acclaim for this book, which makes me a little bit nervous. I'm not sure if I'm gonna love it, if it's too literary or slow moving, which is often what the really critically hyped books are. I might struggle with it a little bit, but I have seen Jordi from Jordi's Book Club on Instagram, as well as Anne Bogle from Modern Mrs. Darcy and the What Should I Read Next podcast also really love this one. So I have high hopes that my tastes align with them with this book in particular, but we will see. I did also, as you can see, pick this as my book of the month book last month. So always good to stay on top of that book of the month backlist. So these are the three books that I'm going to tackle, hopefully within the next week or so. These two I know I have on audio, so hoping I can fly through them relatively quickly. As of now, I don't have an audiobook for Kitty Carr, but I think that might actually be a good thing and I might be setting myself up for success by reading it physically. If it is a bit slower, sometimes reading it physically actually helps me read it at a slower pace. So that I can really digest and get to know the characters, you know, on a deeper level and have some more time to actually care about them. So I will be trying to read this book physically, which I have not been doing really at all the last couple weeks. Honestly, I haven't been reading period, but if I have been, it's been audio. So this will be a nice change of pace for that. Otherwise, what I've got going on and what you will see in this vlog, tomorrow is my son's second birthday, which I'm really excited about. We're having a small party for him here. So later today, I will be going out to do some shopping for some party supplies 
supplies. We haven't gotten a gift for him yet, so I can figure that out. And that should just be a fun time overall, and I'll be able to start one of the books on audio. So of course, I will bring you along for all of that, as well as anything else that I get up to after that. I do also want to include, I have just a little bit of B-roll of me doing the final cleaning of my house before we moved out of it, that I will pop in here, and then I'll be back with an update once I've started one of the books, can give you an initial synopsis and some thoughts, and then we'll just get on with the rest of the reading vlog. So with that, I will leave you and I'll be back once I have an update. Okay, it is a little bit later in the same day. I wanted to update before everyone starts coming home and filling up this house with people. I have already made it 40% of the way through Counterfeit. This is the one I decided to start with. It is the shortest, it's less than 300 pages long, and it's also like a very small book. And the text is fairly large and spaced out on the page. So I'm not surprised that I am flying through it and I'm also really enjoying it. So this is following our main character named Ava, who is an adult woman. She's married, she has a son. And the way this story is told is she is talking to a detective about how she got caught up into this whole counterfeit handbag selling situation. And it comes out that she was put up to it by her old college roommate who they never really got along in college. Our main character didn't really want to associate with her roommate. And she goes into why um, with like stereotype type reasons. And so they lost touch, but then a few years later they reconnected. And basically she learned that her old roommate had this counterfeit handbag scheme that she was trying to run. Someone who was working for her is now out of commission. So she needs someone else to do a specific part of the job and our main character at the time that that conversation happened was in a really desperate position financially and in her relationship with her husband that she decided to join her. And a lot of this book just has been focused on that desperation and how needing to make ends meet or needing money for one reason or another can make you stray away from your morals and do things that you know are wrong, but are means to an end. And that's what, at least at the beginning of the story, our main character thought she was doing. Clearly based on the fact that she's talking to a detective means that they are going to get caught. This whole thing is going to blow up. Somehow I haven't gotten to that portion yet, so I don't know exactly what happens, but it is a compelling story. It is interesting learning about how this whole operation works of gathering the authentic handbags, having them replicated, sourcing that, managing the shipments, managing the quality control, selling them as counterfeits, and just the profitability of that type of fraudulent business. Very interesting, not an industry I have any knowledge or experience with, but it's fun to read about in a fictional capacity. And yeah, I'm definitely interested in finishing out this book to find out what happens. At this point, there really is no mystery being solved other than just finding out what brings them from the beginning of this business to the point of getting caught and wherever they are now. At the time this is being told, I don't think our main character knows where the other girl Winnie is, or at least that's what she's telling the detective. So there may be a little bit of her disappearing and going on the run and trying to find her. 
but we will see. I'm glad that I'm at least entertained by this book. I'm having a good enough time. And as long as my enjoyment level stays where it is or goes up, then I will be very happy. So I will go ahead and probably finish this book. It turns out my husband is going to do all of the party shopping so that I don't have to go into town tonight. So I will have lots more time to do reading. That unfortunately means I won't have any party supplies shopping b-roll to show you, but I definitely will have party prep and setup of the party. I have to show you my kids really cute outfits that my mom made for them. It's all gonna be a fun time. So that is probably going to be the next time I check in is after tomorrow, after I finish this book, after the party, and we will just do a little recap then. All right, hello. I am here with a relatively quick update. I finished Counterfeit today. I don't have the physical book with me, unfortunately, but I wanted to give you thoughts while they're fresh in my mind. Overall, this book was fun. I don't think it was trying to be too deep or too serious or too surprising or twisty or anything. And so with that in mind, I feel like it accomplished its goal of just being generally entertaining. I always think it's a little fun reading about female characters being up to no good, just up to shenanigans. You know, you're kind of rooting for the bad guy in this scenario because these women are doing something very illegal, but they have personalities and families and backstories that make it somewhat justifiable or understandable why they got into what they've gotten into. I enjoyed how this book was told in that it was the main character talking to a detective and basically telling her story from start to finish. There were some parts that I was like, that's a little convenient, or like she would say something like, oh, where was I on this date at this time? let me tell you. And I don't think that a detective would necessarily ask like that perfect question to lead to, you know, whatever story she was telling about that day. There were a couple of instances of that, of her like repeating a question that the detective supposedly asked, which first of all, it's hilarious that she like repeated the question in her answer. That just felt like a very convenient to the story way of speaking, uh, but also that the questions just perfectly matched up with you know, what she was trying to tell and the interesting pieces of information. So that's a little bit nitpicky, but just something I noticed throughout reading it. But overall, I had a fun time. I would generally recommend this to people who liked like the Finlay Donovan series, because that's also kind of a rooting for the bad guy type situation, as well as Killers of a Certain Age is also about a group of female women. They're the good guys, but it's just kind of more actiony, like hijinks type activities that I found kind of similar. So if you liked either of those books and want to try this one out, I do think it was a good read. It was a good use of my time. It was relatively quick. So I'm going to rate it four stars and I'm going to move on to 
actually both other books. So I have started Did You Hear About Kitty Carr physically. I, again, don't have the physical copy with me right now, but I have started it physically. I think I am a little bit less than 50 pages in. So far, it's okay. It's a little bit of a slow build. I do like the present day storyline, which is following one of the three sisters that um, is this really wealthy and famous family. They're a black family. The dad is a musician. The mom was an actress. The oldest sister is an actress and then the other two sisters have their own careers and they were given the inheritance of their next door neighbor Kitty Carr who was also a famous actress but she was white and not related to them. So at the very beginning of the story uh, Kitty has just died. They've learned of their inheritance but they have no idea why she would have given them the money because they were already wealthy like I said. So we're just at the beginning but I am intrigued and then I didn't know this story also has a past timeline where we're following this character named Hazel and I'm not sure who she is if she's an ancestor of one of the characters either Kitty Carr or this main family that we're following. The past timeline is set in 1934. It's not telling Hazel's story in a super linear way so it's a little bit confusing and I'm not quite sure why I'm supposed to care about her but I am assuming that I will get an explanation soon enough so it's not like I'm not enjoying it I'm just holding out for what is to come. So I'm going to continue reading that over the next couple days. I probably am also going to start LA Weather because I have that on audio. We'll see how it goes to read the two books at the same time. That's not normally something I do, but in this case it seems necessary because I don't have Kitty Carr on audio. So that's the update. Right now I am actually parked in front of Barnes & Noble. I felt like doing a little bit of book shopping now that I am in the new which is actually where I'm originally from, but I am back in the hometown and I have not yet been in the bookstores here. So I thought I should rectify that. For now, it's gonna be Barnes and Noble. In the nearish bookstore, I will make some time to check out the indie bookstores near me because there are a few, but you know, it's just an itch I gotta scratch right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my kids from daycare, hang out with them tonight, and then do some more reading. So I will check in with another update once I have it. All right, it is the next day. I wanted to come on with an update of what I got at Barnes & Noble yesterday, as well as an update on my reading. Sorry for the weird angle. Long story short, my tripod is breaking, so I can't make fine adjustments to the height. So when I put it on the desk, it's too tall. When I put it on the floor, it's too short. There's no happy medium, so I'm doing this weird angle thing, and the camera's probably moving a lot. I'm sorry, okay? I will buy a new tripod once I move into the new house. Actually, let me try one thing. There, now it's a weird angle, but at least I'm not manually balancing it. Okay, let's talk about the two books that I got at Barnes & Noble yesterday. I got two young adult books because let's just talk about the price of books for a second, <laughs> especially when you're at a bookstore that, um, you know, sells them full price. Young adult books are definitely more appealing from a price tag perspective. I did go in looking for a few things. I have fairly recently gotten into the habit of either only obtaining books through like Book of the Month and Aardvark or else only buying books after I've already read them and know that I enjoy them just so that I'm not collecting a huge TBR and buying all these books before I know if I actually enjoy them. That's not to say that I never do that but now when I go into a bookstore usually the first things that I look for are books that I've already read and loved because I do like having a collection of favorite books. So I was looking around, I have a couple of recent five star reads that I would love to collect but didn't find them in the adult sections. Did go to the YA section and found one of my most recent five star reads, probably a book that's going to be on my end of the year favorites list and that's If I See You Again Tomorrow by Robbie Couch. I don't think that I've talked about this in a wrap up yet. I think I read this in May and I'll be doing a May and June combo bi-monthly wrap up, but this is a young adult sci-fi book uh, that's really more contemporary. The sci-fi element is just that it's about these two boys who are stuck in a time loop together. So they are repeating the same day over and over, basically like Groundhog's Day. And one of the characters is like the main character that were in his head 
most of the time and then the other character is one that he meets during his repetitive day. I just love a time loop story and long story short I loved this book. It does have a romance developed between these two guys which I fully enjoyed and so I just had so much fun with this book. I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous so I knew that eventually I would want to own it so I was very excited to find this in store and I did go ahead and purchase it as well as another book by this author. So this is called The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. I believe this one is just straight up contemporary about a guy who is openly gay but lives in a small town so he's not always accepted by his community and I think it's going to be a somewhat coming of age, heartwarming, probably at times heart-wrenching, hard-hitting young adult contemporary book which are some of my favorites. I love this cover. I love the spine because it's pink. And looking on Goodreads, this book has some really great reviews. So I'm excited to dive more into this author's backlist because he does have a few books that he's written. Okay, it looks like just these two and then one other. So if I enjoy this one, then I will definitely hunt down that third one and complete this author's backlist. But that definitely scratched the itch that I had to do a little book shopping. And then as far as an update goes of Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? I have been working through this book. Uh, I did find the audiobook of this one on Scribd. I'm not sure if the last time I looked, I was looking before release date, so maybe it wasn't there or I somehow missed it. But I went back and looked and the audiobook is on there. So I have been going back and forth between reading this book physically and listening to the audiobook. I am glad I'm doing that because I'm struggling a bit to get through this one. I'm a little bit over halfway. I'm on chapter 24, page 247. And while the subject matter of this book is interesting. It's not the most entertaining to read about Kitty Carr's life. There are the two timelines that I mentioned where it's the present day and the historical timeline but we're spending a lot of our time in that past timeline and it's building the life of Kitty Carr. We're getting to know all about her basically ancestry and then her career as it's being developed and I do want to get to the end because I want to know the ultimate answer to the question of why did she leave her riches to these three young rich black women but it's a bit of a slog to get through. So I am hopeful that the ending pays off and that there are some twists and turns and reveals that make it a little bit more interesting but for now it feels a little bit like a chore to get through. So I'm kind of having to force myself to read this book whenever I get the chance. I don't know it's just like Kitty Carr's life is a little bit more mundane than it maybe feels like it should be given that she at the time of her death was a very notorious actress. Maybe I'm comparing it too closely to like Evelyn Hugo whose life was a little bit more salacious and like drama filled. Kitty Carr definitely has different issues that she's working through that again are interesting conceptually just not very fun to read about for hundreds and hundreds of pages. But I will persevere. My next update will be once I've finished this book and can give you a final review. I have not started LA Weather like I said that I might just because again I did find the audio of this one so whenever I have time to listen I am going ahead and listening to this one. So I will just finish it up, come back and give you an update on this one before I start that last book for this video. Alright, here with a quick update because I have finished Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? And I'm bummed to say that I am generally disappointed with this book. I'm glad I finished it because I am glad to know the story and I do think there's very interesting and important commentary in here. I just really wish the payoff of the ending was worth um, kind of the longer book because ultimately you're trying to figure out why did Kitty Carr pass on all of her money to these other characters that are seemingly unrelated and also seemingly undeserved of the money and I really think that what you think is the reason why is the reason why. Like it doesn't even 
try to lead you in another direction. And fair enough, if that's not what the book wanted to do, then it doesn't have to do that. I just would have enjoyed it more if it did. Um, it just felt to me like at the very beginning, something's revealed that's like, oh, okay, so that must be what's going on. And then a little bit later, you get a little bit more like, okay, that must be what's going on. But you're not telling me that, but that must be what's happening. And then by the end, it's just like, okay, yep, that's what's happening. And there is a moment when it's revealed, but it's very quick and just unsatisfying. So that part of the book, for some reason, just really disappointed me. I was hoping for a little bit more of, you know, an Evelyn Hugo moment where there's kind of a reveal in that book that doesn't change everything, but definitely changes your perception of the story thus far. This didn't really do that. This book did, however, have a lot of very interesting commentary on race and privilege and bias, and specifically on a history of Black people passing as white people and what kind of advantage that gives them in life. And I think that's super interesting commentary. I did see a lot of reviews compare this book to The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which I have not read yet and I really want to. I'm hoping I enjoy that one more than this one, but it seems to have similar themes and conversations. And I do think those are all worthwhile, worth reading. I just wish the actual plot and mystery of the book was stronger to go along with it. So with that, a pretty anticlimactic three stars is what I'm going to rate this book. I hope that more people pick it up and can contribute more to the conversation and maybe have perspectives that I don't have and be able to provide more context and commentary to this topic because it's not something I've read a lot of. I will continue keeping an eye out for that. But right now, I guess I would just pitch this book more as a historical fiction with a very minimal mystery element that discusses those specific topics. So if you are interested in those, definitely still worth a read. Just don't expect that you're going to be blown away by the plot or the mystery of the story. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start LA Weather. So I will let you know once I'm a little bit into that and have an update and more of a synopsis for that book. And I'll see you at that next check-in. All right, hello everyone. Coming at you with the final update for this vlog because I have unfortunately decided to DNF LA weather. And I decided it pretty early on. I think I only got about 15% into this book, which is not very far, but hear me out. I could very easily tell within that first 15% that this book is not going to be for me. And if I finished it, I probably would have given it a low rating. And I don't wanna do that because I do think I can pitch this book for the people that it is for. Interestingly, enough, actually this book opens with a very suspenseful and tense moment that happens within this family where basically the grandmother is watching these two twin girls and all of a sudden she can't find them and it escalates into this very emotional event. And that event basically highlights to everyone in this family that they are not on the same page. Some people are just checked out of the situation in the family. Some people like their priorities are not aligned. So basically this family is not happy. And I was hoping and thinking that the rest of this book maybe would follow that first event, but it pretty quickly moved on and it's just about the family drama. And especially after reading the full synopsis of this book and going on and reading reviews of this book, I'm confident that it remains that way for the rest of the book. And I don't think I'll like that because I just don't love character driven books where there's basically no plot in this. As far as I could tell, there was basically no plot. Again, it was just like this inciting incident that caused an explosion. And this book is just following each character in their aftermath. And I do think that type of sweeping family saga is very, I don't know if I would say trendy, but popular right now and highly regarded right now. So I can see why this book was published. I can see why it was picked as a Reese's Book Club pick. I think there are a lot of very similar books coming out and stories being told that have kind of that formula. So I get it. I just don't love it myself but that's kind of on me in picking up this book. I really only picked it up because of the cover and really the cover itself should have been an indication to me that this is a little bit more literary, a little bit less plot driven and that's okay. I'm just not gonna read it because I don't think I'm gonna like it. So that quickly brings us to the end of this video because I've read the three books that I was intending to read or read or decided not to read and some pretty mixed results. I did have a pleasant surprise here with Counterfeit. I liked it for what it is and I do think I could like this 
type of story also going forward. Did you hear about Kitty Carr? Not my favorite, was hoping for a little bit more of a payoff at the end of it, but I can respect it and I'm interested to hear more of the discourse that comes out about this book as more people read it because it's a relatively new release. And then a disappointment, just a book that's not for me, which is okay. And I will continue keeping an eye out for books like this that have maybe covers or titles or reviews that catch my attention. But after digging just a little bit deeper, I can realize it's not for me and stop myself from picking up a book that I'm not going to enjoy. But if you have read any of these books, let me know your thoughts on them. If you haven't read these books, let me know, have you read any other Reese Witherspoon book club picks? What have been your favorites or what are your thoughts on her book club as a whole? Like I said, I have really enjoyed a lot of her picks. I also like seeing what she's doing with her production company and in adapting books and turning them into movies or TV shows. I think that's a really interesting element that she brings to the table in terms of running a book club and potentially picking books that she herself has a hand in producing as an adaptation. I think that's really cool and interesting. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.